<laughs> okay, so it turns out that <laughs> that was ridiculous. It turns out that for a handful of reasons, some of them uh, intentional and some of them maybe legacy related, Laravel can sometimes be a little more lenient than you might prefer. So I'm referring to things like not notifying you when lazy loading takes place. That can sometimes be hmm, a, a bottleneck. I'm referring to things like uh, when it silently discards attributes and you don't really know why. Or, or also things like allowing you to access attributes on an eloquent model that, that don't exist, that just return null. Again, these are all things that can be a little frustrating at times. But luckily, if you want, there is a way to force Laravel to be a bit more strict. And I'll show you how in this layer bit. All right, let's start off with a few examples. So I've created a fresh Laravel application and some basic scaffolding for posts. And uh, actually, this is a good alias to be aware of. You can add this to your own projects. MFS stands for migrate, fresh, and see the database. So if I run that, you can see, yep, I have a simple post table as well as a post seeder that adds around 100 records to the database. Okay, so if I go to my routes file, yeah, you can see I've set up a endpoint for posts. And yeah, let's just say post equals post all, and then we will return that directly from the route. Okay, so if we view this in the browser, sure enough, as you might expect, I get the JSON for all of those posts. Okay, so far, no problem. Let's now pass this to a view. And then within that view, this is the standard welcome view that Laravel provides. I'll delete it and start from scratch. And then we'll say, as part of a list, very quickly loop over all of our posts and for each one, render its title as part of a list item. So if I come back to Firefox and give it a refresh, yeah, we have 100 dummy posts. Okay, but now it would be helpful for this layer bit if we could see the precise database queries that are being executed. So with that in mind, I'm going to require uh, Barry's Laravel debug bar, and we'll pull that in, and that should register itself. So if I come back to, there we go. If I come back to Firefox and give it a refresh, I should now see it right here. Okay, and sure enough, we're doing a single query, select star from posts, very cool. So now if we come back to our routes file, well, maybe, a post belongs to an author, right? And if we take a look, I've already set up that relationship. Okay, let's see if we can reference that within our view. So maybe I could say within parentheses, who was it written by? By post, author, and uh, what do we have here? Create user's name. Okay, post, author, name. Come back to Firefox, give it a refresh, and yeah, we now have the author's name, which is great, but if I bring back the debug bar, mm, 101 database queries. So yeah, th this is what we're talking about when we reference the n plus one problem. Okay, so I get it. I know what you're thinking. Well, of course, Jeff, you need to go back and you need to eager load the relationship like this. Post with the author and give me the results. And you're totally right. That will bring us back to a total of two queries. But again, remember, it's good to know how to solve this problem, but this layer bit is not about that. This layer bit is about how we can uh, protect ourselves from ever falling into the trap in the first place. So here's what we can do. I'm gonna go to my app service provider and within the boot method, I will say model, let's import that, prevent lazy loading. And a little tip, make sure that you're not accidentally calling prevent lazy loading. Uh, that's a getter. We don't want that. We want to turn it on instead. Okay. So if I come back, we shouldn't have any change here because we had already solved that lazy loading problem. But yeah, if I come back and bring it back to what we started with, post all, now notice the difference here. If I give it a refresh, we now get a lazy loading violation exception. Attempted to lazy load author, but lazy loading is disabled. So compare that to, if I turn this off, what we would have by default. Refresh, and everything still works. Okay, but now think about this. In a production environment, I still want things to work. Or in other words, I don't want to blow up the application in production simply because of a lazy loading violation. I only want that in a local environment. Okay, here's how we can fix that. I can pass a Boolean here. And this basically uh, specifies 
whether or not it should be enabled. So right now, I have it set to false, which means it's not enabled. It's as if I never called it in the first place. If I change it to true, it is enabled, as you see there. Okay, so why don't we make this dynamic and say, check if we are in production. And if we are not in production, we want to prevent lazy loading. But if we are, mm, just, just let it pass. Okay, so come back to Firefox. In a local environment, it works. But if I were to visit my environment file and switch us over to production, notice, yeah, we're not going to see any kind of exception. And that is exactly uh, what we'd prefer. Cool. So now if I bring this back, yeah, think about it. If you turn this on at the beginning of a application you're developing, you will never fall into this trap again. And we'll see, okay, attempted to lazy load author on line 13. We must not have eager loaded it. Okay, let's fix the problem. Come back and repeat what we did earlier. Post with author, get the results, and that should remove the exception. Pretty cool. All right, let's move on to the next one. So let's see if you've ever run into this one where you're creating a new eloquent record. In this case, all I have for a post is a user ID, a title, and then a body. But yeah, imagine that at some point you set your fillable fields protected, fillable, and maybe when you started, all a post included was a title. Okay, this again is a really easy trap to fall into. Think about it. What do you think will happen when fillable is set to only title, but you try to create a new post record that also includes the user ID and the body? And if you guessed they will be uh, omitted or ignored, then you are right. Let's give it a shot. Refresh. And yeah, we get an, an exception, which is good, but notice we reached the database logic before that exception took place. So notice integrity constraint violation. So it was trying to insert only the title and the timestamps, even though we also included the body and the user ID. And yeah, this is expected behavior because on your fillable property, you didn't include those, uh, but again, it's not overly clear. So th that's what I mean when I say it's an easy trap to fall into. So let's fix that once again by returning to app service provider and we'll add another one. This one is model prevent and all of these uh, security or strict mode opt-ins start with the word prevent. Okay, in our case, we want prevent silently discarding attributes. And like before, we can enable it only in a local or testing or staging environment. Okay, so if I switch back, I want you to watch the exception change. If I refresh now, yeah, we catch it much, much sooner and we have a nice and helpful message for how to solve the problem. Okay, great. So I could either return to post and make my fix, or if you prefer and you're responsible, you could disable this feature entirely. You do that by returning to app service provider and you can set model unguard. And yeah, to be honest, that's what I do. Okay, so let's come back to our routes file and get set up for our third option. So I will bring this back to what we had before. Yeah, okay, number three. Sometimes you might reference or reach for an attribute name that either has a typo or maybe you thought it existed and was available, but it's actually not. Okay, so let's see. How do you think Laravel would handle this by default? Well, come back to Firefox, give it a refresh. And yeah, notice it just sort of ignores it. It evaluates the null and, and that's all it does. And, and maybe, maybe that's what you want, but probably it's not. So let's see if we can make Laravel a little more strict. Back to app service provider and we'll say model prevent accessing missing attributes. So yeah, again, it does what it says on the 10. If you try to access an attribute on an eloquent model that's not available, then we're not going to allow you to do that. All right, let's see what happens. Come back and give it a refresh. And now, once again, we get a missing attribute exception. Hmm, it's letting you know, all right, you tried to access that and, and that looks a little fishy. It either does not exist or was not retrieved from the model. So yeah, again, this could happen if you just make a mistake, uh, you have a typo, or it could even happen in situations where uh, in real life you're selecting 
uh, not the entire uh, set of attributes that your view expects. So maybe you're grabbing the title or even the body, but nothing else. Well, in your welcome view, if you now try to reference the title because you know it exists in the database, once again, you're now going to get an exception. Mm. Oh, in this case, user ID. Sorry about that. Let's fix that. User ID. But yeah, now we're going to get something related to the title. All right. Well, you're trying to reference title, but that's not available to you. So I'm going to throw an exception as a convenience. And yeah, again, I can now see the problem and fix it immediately. Oh, I need to grab the title, the body, and the user ID, or everything in this scenario. And that should solve the problem. Okay, so that's three ways to make Laravel just a little bit more strict. And even better, as a convenience, if you want to turn on all three of these at once, you can change this to model should be strict, we'll say only for local development or testing or staging. And yeah, if we click through, you can see it does all three things that we reviewed in this video. Have fun.